the days of Israel's rebirth, the forces of hell have been trying to wipe it out. From the very moment, the day that it was declared, they tried to wipe it out. Now the Bible reveals this demonic entity. In, in the Hebrew, it's Sar Paras, Persia. Sar Paras, the principality of Persia. What happened to it? The nation of Persia has not died. It's still alive. And principalities don't die. These two things put together means what would the prince, the Tsar Paras, the prince of Persia be today? It would be the principality of Iran. Iran is Persia. Now under the Shah of Iran, a while back, Iran was not against Israel, but it was overthrown by a radical Islamic regime which is in power to this day. Amazing to fathom that the same principalities are at work. They don't disappear. And today, that could be today behind the news can be ancient principalities. Behind Hamas, behind Hezbollah. And it reveals something else because ancient Persia was not Islamic, it was pagan. But you have that principality. Well, the fury now against Israel, against America, for terror, for Hamas and Hezbollah is Islamic. Yet what it reveals is behind, be deeper than Islamic, deeper than the label, deeper, is our principalities. They don't care if it's Islamic or not. They will use anything. And that, that means, and that, they take this further, this revelation, because it means not just that. It means that there could be organizations, movements, nations, people in the 21st century that maybe consider themselves secular, doesn't matter, right wing, left wing, but behind it may be principalities, ancient principalities. Even that things that are happening in America, I won't go more into it now, but this is, pray for me, because this is linked to the book that I have not been able to write to because, because I've had this, there's such warfare about stopping this book, but is even linked to things happening in America right now affecting our lives that are linked to ancient principalities. But that's for another time. The revela but this is also about that in another way. The revelation that the angel had given to Daniel had to do with the Jewish people in the end times. And it's blocked by the principality of Persia, Iran. Today, Israel views as its greatest enemy, not the Soviet Union is gone, not even China, not even, but Iran. That happens to be the same one that is linked to the principality that's trying to stop the revelation of Israel in the last days. So now Israel comes back. Think about that. Israel comes back as the prophecy, the, the Bible said, coming back. Israel comes back into the world and it's as if it activated, reactivated the principalities. Because the principality is trying to stop the revelation that's talking about what's happening now or what's going to happen with Israel. Iran is behind it. Where did they get those missiles from? They got them from Iran or they got them from money to pay it from Iran. All from Iran. Which behind Iran is the principality which wants to destroy Israel. Where did all this conflict begin? It began, this most recent one, began on the Temple Mount or is linked to the Temple Mount. Why? For the same reason that Israel itself is the center of conflict and fury. Why? Because the Jewish people have to, why do they have to battle just to stay alive? Because of the purposes of God. Because the Bible says that the purposes of God come through that nation, come through Israel. If you're born again today, it's because the purpose of God came through Israel and you are born again today. They brought the word, they brought, it wasn't them, it's about God, but they brought the word, they brought Messiah, they brought salvation so you could be saved. And it is foretold that at the end they will again, the nation of Israel will come back, it's back, will usher in the purpose of God, will usher in the coming of the Messiah and the kingdom of God. And Paul said when that happens, when that happens, when they come back to God, the curse itself is going to be lifted off the creation. How big is that? The enemy's finished. And the knowledge of God will cover the earth. Now this is big. This is the end game. It's the fulfillment of all the prophecies and purposes of God that darkness knows it. The, they don't, the, the, the enemy doesn't know everything, but he knows some things. The forces of hell know it. The Sar Paras. The principality of Persia knows it. He stopped, 
He's tried to stop the angel from even talking about it to get to Daniel. Since the days of Israel's rebirth, the forces of hell have been trying to wipe it out. From the very moment, the day that it was declared, they tried to wipe it out. And the whole world, the United Nations, you know, with all that they do, all the nations of the world kill, you know, China, Soviet Union, others killing millions of their own people, never condemned them. But they have condemned the tiny little democracy called Israel more than it's condemned all the nations of the world put together. What is that? That is demonic. That is not natural. That makes no sense. But it makes sense spiritually because Israel is back for a reason. And within Israel, it centers on the city of Jerusalem. That's why Jerusalem is always the conflict, always. And within Jerusalem, it centers on a little piece of land called the Temple Mount because that is where God's going to reign. That's where Messiah is coming. So that's where the temple stood. And so the enemy has focused his fury on Israel, the Jewish people, on the land of Israel, the city of Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount. What has the enemy done? Well, you look at, go to the Temple Mount today, and you will find on the Temple Mount is a dome of a rock, a Muslim, right on where the Holy of Holies may have been, right on there. Why? Because you can't build with that thing on there. On the eastern side of the Temple Mount, the Golden Gate, through which Messiah is going to enter, and you have a reproduction of it right on that corner there. It's all walled up. Why? Because a Muslim ruler said, who told the Messiah is coming, we're going to wall it up. When you go to the Temple Mount, they don't, they, they, they're getting a little looser, but they, they don't, don't even allow you to pray there. Like, why is the enemy so, why is it so much, why? Can't pray, can't open up a Bible. I always try to nevertheless get the ironic blessing in without them arresting me. One time I thought, you know, because you know, we got kicked off once, you know. But one time I was there. I, this is not in the notes. You're, I get a little looser on the second service. Uh, <laughs> one time I was going to, I was going to pray and, 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 and all of a sudden, because usually they're watching all over everything you do and they're all gone. All the Islamic authorities are gone and we didn't know what happened. Turned out somebody from our group, a lady, one, one of the buses, uh, ran up the Temple Mount waving an Israeli flag. <laughs> they all got distracted. I gave the blessing. So he said, from now on, we got to have somebody running up with that. No, no, no. Why is the enemy so sensitive about that Temple Mount? Because of what is coming. Coming. And so all this that happened was triggered by the Temple Mount. It triggered all this hell, fury against Israel, linked to Iran. The war, funded by it, but linked to the Temple Mount. By Iran, here. You see, the enemy will always seek to attack the purposes of God, to prevent it, stop them, hinder them. Now think about what happened in Daniel 10. Think about what happened one chapter before it, Daniel 9. Daniel had just received the great, the great prophecy of the 77s, the coming of Messiah, with the exact countdown to when Messiah is going to come mathematically, and when the temple's coming, and, and all the end times right there in Daniel 9. He got it, got in. The, and there was no, we don't know there was any resistance. He said he was praying. The angel came, gave it to him. But it's almost like the forces of hell said, that one got through and look what happened. So now we're going to stop the next one. The enemy does, seeks that. And, this, and, and the, the revelation now, so it comes with a lot of fighting, from Daniel 10 all the way to the end of the book, it comes from this that was fought over by the principality. And here now Israel is back and all hell is against it and it's particularly Persia. And here's the thing. It's not just that, that the enemy is against Israel. The enemy is against you. The enemy has against you. Not only is, does God have a purpose for Israel, that's why the enemy is against it, but God has a purpose for your life. So the enemy is against. God has a purpose behind your life, ahead of your life, from the time you were conceived, even before that, he knew it. And the enemy knows about it. He doesn't know everything, but he knows about it. And he'll do anything he can to stop God's purposes from happening in your life. He'll seek to delay them, hinder them, preempt them, prevent them, distract from them. Not only will he, he has done it. He has already been doing it. 
God says, I know the plans I have for you. The enemy also has an idea of those plans. He knew God's plan for Moses, at least for a time. That's why he tried to kill him as a baby before it could happen. He knew God's plan for Joseph. That's why he tried to have his brothers kill him before it could happen. He knew God's plan for Jeremiah to a degree. He had him arrested, could have had, tried to have him killed. He knew God's plan for the Messiah to a degree, tried to have Herod kill him when he was a baby so he could stop it all. He knew God's plan for Israel. And so for 2,000 years and more, he's been trying to have them wiped off the earth. He's been trying to nullify them. Now he tried to do it with you before you knew the Lord. If you have not, we were not brought up with the Lord. He tried to do it. He tried to keep you from the Lord. So that your purposes can never be fulfilled. For some of you, he literally tried to kill you. For me, I was hit by a train. Now I knew God was in that, but the enemies, well, God, you know, could be the same thing. Anyway, if he could have wiped me out, wiped you out, he would have done it. Some of you, he had you become self-destructive so you could do it. Some of you, he had you addicted. Addicted to substances, drugs, alcohol, l pornography, sexual immorality. Some of you, he wounded, tried to wound you, break you as a child so you could not fulfill the purposes. Some of you, he tried to defile, taint you, make you bitter, make you in doubt, make you ashamed so you couldn't even believe that God could ever use you. Some of you, he sought to misdirect you give you idols instead of God so you could redirect the gift that God had for you and use it for something else. And most likely you had no idea at the time. You just took it as your life. That's what happened. This is my life. You didn't realize it was the enemy trying to stop you. Trying to stop all those plans that God knew he had for you. It was your own Prince of Persia. A number of years ago, I was talking to Eric Stackelbeck, who's a good brother. He's on TBN. He was here, journalist who's been used to tell the world about what's the, happening in the Middle East. He told me before he came to the Lord, he was shot, a gunshot. In his, in, and, and in his side, he was hospitalized. And he was at the low, it was a low point of his life. And he says, I just never, I know the Lord now, but I never understood why this happened. Why? I said, Eric, you were, you were called to be used of God's purposes. You were called to, as a journalist to touch all these lives of people. The enemy was trying to stop it before it happened. I just saw him recently. He was interviewing me on TBN. And he told me more. He said it was within 12 hours of him getting shot that he got the phone call giving him his first job to become a journalist. He said 12 hours. And he said the bullet was right next to a critical vein. It would have easily killed him. It was the prince of Persia in his life. He didn't realize it then. He realizes it now. You may not have realized it when those things were happening, but that's what it was. See, God will work all things in your life out for good. The enemy will try to work out all things in your life for bad. God will use it all. The enemy attacks the purposes of God. Even now, if you're in God's will, you're in God's purposes, he'll attack you. It you know, just because you're getting attacked doesn't mean it's not. You could, it can be that you are. The enemy uses obstacles for you. The enemy tries to block the plans, tries to wall up the golden gate in your life. Put, put the dome of the rock, a substitute right on where God wants you to be or what he has for you. When the angel came to Daniel, he, men he mentioned what the principality tried to do. He's saying, this is why I'm late. You know when you're late, you want to explain it. So the angel says, listen, I'm sorry, I'm late, but traffic jam. It was a principality, you know. But then he got right on with the purposes. So remember that. It's not about the attacks on your life. It's about the plans on your life. Let the attacks focus you all the more on the plans. Amen. Get on with it. The enemy is okay if you want to focus on him your whole life. We are to be aware of him. That's what Paul said. But we're not to be dwelling on him. Because when you're dwelling on him, you're not fulfilling the plans. So get on with it. Even in the middle of an attack, get on with the plans. Don't just focus on the attack. Get on with the plans. The, the attack is about the plans. And there's something more. The enemy doesn't attack indiscriminately. Prophetically here, he's focusing on Israel, Jerusalem, the Temple Mount. So get this, his attacks actually reveal the very things that are chosen by God. The enemy's attack on your life is revealing, number one, you are chosen by God, but also specifically revealing within your life particularly things that are chosen to be used of God 
that the enemy's trying to destroy. Your purity. You know, God, the enemy wants to destroy it because God wants to use it. The enemy may be attacking especially your family, your marriage. God wants to use it. The enemy may be especially attacking your finances. God wants to use it. The enemy is attacking your relationships with others. God wants to use it. God wants he, you, the enemy may be attacking by having you be afraid to talk to people. God wants to use you to spread the word. Amen. The enemy wants you in fear. God wants you to overcome it. Amen. With some of you, and you may think about this. I mean, there's particular things the enemy attacks. With some of you, the enemy has been doing everything he could to distract you, divert you, because when you're so distracted with everything else and all the, the, the stuff of life, you're not going to do his will. The enemies, so the enemy's attack actually contain the revelation for you of what God wants to use. Amen. And not only the, 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 the focus of his attack, but the timing of his attack yes. may reveal the timing that God wants to do something very great. Yes. Yes. There are certain times when it was obvious in my life and in the ministry when the enemy is just going crazy. It was linked to something great that God was going to do. One of those times was when I was asked to go on the first, our first kind of prophetic mission to the nations, to India. And the moment I said yes, everything, all hell broke loose. That very weekend. And it never, it never let up. It was crazy, craziness, false reports, the tickets for the, were gone, everything, the plane, the, the uh, engine started falling apart in flight. I mean, I can tell you so much, everything up until the very end of it. But at the end of it, we saw about 70,000 Indian people pray to receive the Lord. The enemy knew it. You know, just before the first book that I ever wrote came out, I said, pray, pray. That week came Hurricane Irene to Beth Israel, flooded. When one of my books, another book came out, on the exact day of the release, stroke of midnight, I become paralyzed. Mysterious infection. I'm, I'm, I'm in the hospital for the week. I've never been in the hospital overnight, but it was the release date of the book. Another book comes out on the day of the release. I get a strange pain in my abdomen. My appendix burst. I'm in the hospital again for about a week. You want to find the, the only times I've ever stayed overnight in a hospital? Look at the release date of the books. <laughs> now, I'm not saying it has to happen, and God forbid, you know, all that, but when we were starting Beth Israel, it was like that too. It was like we're, 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 go, we're trudging against the snow. Like it was, but Scott was going to do something great. Don't fear the attack because God is greater than any attack. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn, and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.